Hey everyone and welcome to another video guys and today we're going to be talking about autopiloting. Now, have you ever felt like this where you queue up, you enter into a game and then you just find yourself clicking and playing or maybe you find yourself losing all focus and just playing without thinking and for some people you may feel like you're just zoomed out of the game. You're not really there. Like you're there playing the game but you're not present in the moment. You may be thinking about other things or maybe you're just straight up not thinking at all. Now, this fascinates me because we talk about how much our rank means to us or how important improvement is to us, but we still let this happen. You know, we, we sign up to coaching, we join improvement discords, we watch improvement videos like my content, and we get so angry after losing, yet we still find ourselves autopiloting. How does this work? Why is this happening? So in this video, I'm going to really try and break down what I think autopiloting is, why it happens, and what we can do to minimize the chances of autopiloting in our next games. Now, the first question you're probably going to go ahead and ask is, Curtis, what the hell even is autopiloting? Now, before I can go ahead and answer that question, there's one quick point I need to preface this entire video with. Now, our brain at every single point in time during the day is trying to find ways to conserve energy because conserving energy has been essential for human survival for a very long period of time. It doesn't matter whether you're making breakfast, you know, making your toast or cereal, going down the street, riding a bike, making your bed, um, you know, having a shower, whatever it is, our brain is trying to find a way to do that task with as little mental energy as possible because we're trying to conserve as much of it as we can. Now, this is where system one and system two decision making really comes into play. Now, on the right, right hand side here, we have a little diagram. 95% of our decisions are done through system one. This is where it's very, you know, these are all the instinctual, intuitive, habitual decisions are made. It's very unconscious, very fast. We don't need to think, it's just there. Whereas system two, this is the 5% of our decisions are done through system two, is very rational thought, you know, very rational level thinking, requires a lot of thought, a lot of mental energy, takes a lot of effort, and is very slow. Now you may ask, what the hell does system one and system two decision making have to do with my games in solo queue and League of Legends as a whole? Now, like I mentioned before, system one decision making being very instinctual and habitual is largely ingrained over time as a result of seeing the same things or doing the same things again and again again and again. Now, if you're a League of Legends player that has played thousands of games, let's just say you're a challenger level League of Legends player, things like CSing, basic trading patterns on your main champions, basic map awareness, basic warding, basic jungle tracking, a lot of these things may even just be habitual or instinctual. You won't even have to think. You could just purely rely on your system one decision making and play to a decent level. Whereas, you know, a beginner player because they haven't had the opportunity to ingrain all of these things as habits and they have basically very low instincts because they haven't played many games, if they were to purely rely on the system one decision making, it would be terrible. There would be basically nothing there. They wouldn't even be able to last it. They wouldn't be able to trade. They wouldn't remember to ward. None of these things. Now, you may ask, okay, then what role does system one have in, you know, in League of Legends as a challenger player or just a player overall? Now, System one is very important because it actually allows us to free up our mental capacity to think about the more complex parts of the game. So take me for example, I don't really need to think about my trading patterns or my wave manipulation or basic warding and things like that when I'm playing Orianna. But what this allows me to do is now use that energy th to think about, oh, okay, Rift Herald's coming up in two minutes. What do I need to do to prepare, to prepare for that? Or how can I make a creative pick in that side of the jungle given the jungle is going to path this way? Like the very complex, creative, macro-oriented concepts that I would no way be able to think about if I'm worrying about my CSing, my trading, and all these little micro details within the laning phase. But I can afford to do that because I've created so many habits and it's been ingrained within my system one decision making. So all that's happening when autopiloting, guys, is that you're simply just relying on your system one decision making to play the game for you. I'm relying on the habits and instincts that have been refined over thousands of games of league played. I'm not employing any of this system two level of decision making. I'm not doing any slow, logical, rational thoughts. This actually makes a lot of sense in reference to translating leads because when I autopilot and I get a lead in the early game for some reason, whether I get a gank or I get some weird solo kill, whatever it is, I very rarely translate my lead effectively because in order to translate leads, you need to take information from everywhere and make a creative solution. You need to, you need to assess the jungle pathing, the power spikes, summoner spells, 
uh, what's happening in the side lanes, the next objective. You need to think in the future, and that requires system two level of thought. It requires you know logical thought process, rational thinking, takes a lot of effort, and that's obviously not really part of your system one instinctual habitual level of thought. So um, hopefully this makes a little bit of sense here, guys. And again, at the end of the day, the brain is just trying to conserve as much energy as possible. So let's get a little bit more specific, guys. So my theory is that we use a series of heuristics to manage autoplotting throughout a game without the end result being an absolute disaster. And you may ask them, what the hell is a heuristic? Well, a heuristic is a mental shortcut that allows people to solve problems and make judgments quickly and efficiently. Now, think of them as like a, a gut feeling or a guesstimate, and they're not really meant to be perfect, but we rely on heuristics in our everyday life just to complete simple tasks without overwhelming our brain. And if you're interested more about learning about heuristics, then give it a quick Google. It's super, super interesting. Now, in League while autopiloting, I believe we use a lot of heuristics because these are things that we do that have somewhat worked in the past and still get the job done even though it's not pretty. For example, AOEing the wave down and missing CS. I see a lot of people, even myself while autopiloting, I'll just default response if I'm playing Orianna, I'll just QW the wave. And yes, I might miss two or three minions in the process, but you know what? I'm still getting the wave out, I'm still AOEing it down, it's much easier, it still gets the job done. And as you can see, these heuristics that I'm about to list, you can see in some situations I won't really get punished for it, but in some situations I'll get really punished for it. Or maybe I only get punished for it a little bit, and if I do this again and again and again, it will lead to a massive discrepancy in the future. Or if I were to do these things in high elo, I'll get punished much more than I would in low elo. Okay, the next one is automatically shoving because in my mind, pressure equals good. This is so incredibly common. When people autopilot, they default response to, let's just shove. They don't think about freezing, holding the waves, slow building waves, insta shoving into recalling. They don't think about you know what they can actually do with the wave because when autopiloting in the past, if I just get the wave out, pressure equals good. You know, they may be in a situation where they get the wave out and that allowed them to get a reset, or maybe they got the wave out that allowed them to get to a fight, or in their mind they've just heard analysts and coaches and people on the internet say pressure equals good, get priority, pressure equals good, but no, if you've watched my content, you know that you have to be a little bit more calculated than that. You need to think, well, what's my intention here? Should I slow build? Should I fast push? Should I freeze? Should I keep the wave in the middle? Should I keep it on my side? And this is why in low elo, if you do this, you could probably just get away with it. But in high elo, you're probably not going to have that same luxury. And this is a very common heuristic I believe people employ at every single level of play. The third one is, you know, just you see the enemy jungle on the bot side of the map and your default response is just ward. I see jungle, I'm just going to put a ward bot side. And so the reason this is dangerous is because, you know, you're not panning your camera, assessing his HP, thinking about his jungle path and thinking about where he's going to go next. He might actually be 10% HP knowing he has to reset and he's going to go back to base, go back straight onto top side, clear his camps and then get like a Rift Herald. He might not even be on the bot side of the map or pretty much 95% of the time, he's not going to be bot side for a long period of time. So I see this a lot when people autopilot, they just randomly throw out wards. And yes, sometimes that may work. In some situations, that may save you because maybe that guy in other situations is sitting at 90% HP and then he goes back onto bot side and you see him on the ward and you actually protect yourself. Um, the fourth one here is a throwing, and this is a very common one, throwing a skill shot without waiting for the enemy to last hit. I see this again with so many champions where you may get away with it. You may be able to just randomly throw out a Lux E and hit the and hit the E. Maybe because the enemy's bad, you're at a, at a low level of play, or maybe you just got lucky, or maybe the enemy's autopiloting as well. For whatever reason, you could just get away with throwing these E's and hitting them. But again, there would be a lot of situations where if you just held the E, wait for them to walk up to last hit, you can basically guarantee that you'll hit that E or at least deny the enemy from getting the last hit because they'll be too scared to walk up. And again, as the higher you ELO you get, um, you'll get punished more and more and more for autopiloting, okay? And as you can see, guys, these are just very simple heuristics. I'm sure there's thousands or hundreds of them or even miniature ones that we do every single game while autopiloting in order to get through a game without it absolutely exploding. Now, remember, guys, these all can work at times, but they ruin any sort of consistency because they add up over time to both miss opportunities and put yourself in very unfavorable situations. And note, guys, the dangerous thing about it the more we do these heuristics and the more we autopilot, we actually deeper, deeper and deeper and deeper ingrain these poor habits. 
Okay, if you find yourself autopiloting again and again and again and employing these sorts of heuristics, these are going to just become your level of play. This is just what you do. You just randomly throw out skill shots. You just randomly use your wards. You just automatically shove waves. You just randomly AOE the wave down and, and just miss CS. This becomes your level of play. And this is where autopiloting actually does become quite dangerous. Now for the dangers of autopiloting, guys. So a large reason autopiloting exists, in my opinion, is because you can simply just get away with it. You can simply or purely rely on your system one level of decision making for the first five minutes of the lane, purely using all of these heuristics, relying on your habits, your instincts, and maybe even come out even or slightly behind, which isn't the end of the world, especially in low elo. Now compare this with say a combat sport. If you're fighting in the UFC or you're boxing or whatever, and you drop your guard for say two or three seconds, you get punished instantly and you know you can't get away with this. So you're less inclined to do it again. But in League, if you can get away with it, and we know how humans work, if you can get away with something once, you're very likely to do it again, whether it's later in mid game, whether it's in late game, or whether it's just straight up within another game. Now, something to think about guys, and the crazy thing is, you can literally get rewarded for autopiloting. You can just literally win the game from autopiloting. So it's not just that you're not punished, it's literally rewarded. And this is one reason, guys, as to why using LP as a sole metric of improvement is incredibly dangerous. Because I can maybe autopilot for the first 5 minutes, or the first 10 minutes, or maybe even an entire game and still win. Because maybe the enemy was autopiloting, maybe I just got carried, whether, you know, I just, you know, I was in, I, my composition was just incredibly OP, or I had the luxury to counterpick and the matchup was really, really easy. The fact that I can autopilot and get away with it, and literally sometimes even get rewarded, is ridiculous and this is incredibly incredibly dangerous and on top of this guys the immediate feedback for autopiloting you know assuming that your autopiloting doesn't actually work and you lose the game isn't really there because it takes 30 to 40 minutes to see that defeat logo and by the time you see that defeat logo we're very rarely going to identify that loss with autopiloting as the reason we lost that game Right, we're probably going to blame our bot lane or our jungler or the, the, the jungle diff or the top diff or, or my team was flaming me so I didn't play so well. For whatever reason, we're very rarely going to blame that loss on autopiloting. So there's a lot of reasons here, guys, um, to suggest that autopiloting is incredibly dangerous for your long-term improvement. Now, this is very important, guys. We must remember when we autopilot, it's very rarely the entire game. It's usually just a brief portion or a brief period within the game, whether it's a two minutes here or three minutes here or a five minutes here. It's usually just a short section, but that is all it takes to lose the game or miss an opportunity to win the game. And this is a massive invisible narrative, by the way, in lower elo. And actually, to be honest with you, I've seen this all the way up until Diamond and Master Tier, where people don't understand that it's one decision that can literally win or lose you the game. If you die, if you die at say three minutes, say you lose focus, you autopilot, you don't lean to one side or you don't use your ward and you die at three minutes, that can literally be all it takes to snowball the enemy and they can just run away with the game. Especially as you get up to like diamond, master, grandmaster, or whatever it is. All it takes is one little brief period where you're autopiloting and that there goes the game. And what I see all the time in low elo and gold, they think what dictates a win is that, you know, that 30 minute team fight or that 25 minute dragon fight or that double kill they got in river at 18 minutes. No, the reason you're even in that position at 18 minutes to get that fight is because of all the little things adding up, right? So if you autopilot, you're going to miss an incredible amount of opportunities. You're not going to be building waves. You're not going to be slow building waves. You're not going to be freezing, holding the wave on, on, on your side to set up a gank. You're not going to be leaning to one side and, and warding very deep. You're not going to be tempo resetting. All of these small things that create micro advantages just aren't going to happen because of autopiloting. So keep that in mind, guys. It's very important to be aware this is a massive danger of actually autopiloting. And note, guys, the way we usually learn is by making conscious decisions and then understanding the outcome of our conscious decisions. Once we autopilot, there is no conscious decision making anymore. So even if we do become aware of the outcome, whether we die from autopiloting, whether we lose from autopiloting, whatever it is, it doesn't really mean anything because there is no context to that outcome. We didn't actively make a decision to create that outcome. So we don't know what decisions lead to good things and what decisions lead to bad things. And this is the key, or this is the crux of actually improving over the long run. And just a little thing to remember guys, we can actually still learn while autopiloting in a weird way. I believe we can still learn and refine things like CSing, skirmishing, basic trading patterns, dodging skill shots, in some weird way. I don't know how it works, and this is something I want help from you guys in the community, in the comments. If you have an idea about, 
you know, whether you think this is wrong or whether you think this is right or why this is the case, I'd be really open to hearing back from you guys because I don't understand how this works. And this is something I need to do more research on. But my hunch, my gut feeling is that we still do learn some things even when purely relying on our system one. And I don't really know how that works. I'd love to hear back from you guys in the community. Now for what we can do to minimize our chances of autopiloting. Now, one of the biggest misconceptions is that autopiloting is to be dealt with within the game. No, that's just not the case at all. All of the work has to be done out of the game to reduce the likelihood of it happening in the first place. If you find yourself autopiloting within a game, it's very unlikely that you're going to be able to bounce back and remain fully focused within that game. You've probably done a lot of things wrong out of the game that have led to this moment. So what I'm going to do now is list a few things that have helped me personally to reduce the chances um, of myself autopiloting within a game. Now, the first one. Connect with your goals. Ideally, these goals are both audacious and very exciting and very important to you. Now, for me, this was a very, very big one. When I was playing, say, earlier on this season, I didn't really have a goal in terms of what rank I wanted to reach. I didn't have a number. I didn't have anything that excited me. And around midway through the season, I decided to myself, Curtis, I want 750 LP challenger. That was my goal. Just for some reason, I pulled this number out of my ass. I wanted 750 LP challenger. This goal excited me, right? I would connect with it all the time. Like Curtis today, solo queue, this is my goal. This is what I want to achieve. And for some reason, it just excited me. The number, the look of it, the feel of it, it would give me confidence. And this is what really motivated me and gave me purpose to play solo queue. Now, I found the times where I don't have purpose. I don't have a goal. I find it very hard to remain focused and I find myself always drifting back into autopilot because there is no reason, there is no incentivization for me to actually focus because I'm not connected to a certain goal. I'm not trying to bring about a certain outcome. So this is very important. It may seem simple, but you'd be surprised at how many people don't connect with their goals. The second was, was having actually very specific learning objectives or parts of your game that you want to hone in on. Now, this was another big one for me. Now, I found myself again towards the end of the season, autopiloting a little bit, not playing my best. And then I said to myself, I want to refine specifically my click accuracy, my clicking speed, and my micro. And every single game, I was directing my attention towards my clicking, my micro, my movement. And when I did this, I found myself very rarely tilting, very rarely autopiloting, and really playing Focus League of Legends again and again and again. Because not only was I connected with my goals, I knew exactly what I wanted to do each and every single game. I had intention. I had purpose. I knew what I was trying to achieve. That was a very big one for me. And the third one here, having a rough schedule and splitting your games into blocks of three can really increase intensity and minimize your chances of autopiloting. I'm not going to go deep on this one. I talk about this within so many of my videos. So if you want to know more about it, check out all of the rest of my videos, whether it's a psychology playlist or why you aren't climbing or coin flip or whatever it is. And the fourth one here, clear your mind. Now, this is a, another big one for me. What I realized is that when I had a lot of shit in my mind, whether it's from real life stuff, whether it's girl problems, whether it's business problems, financial problems, emotional problems, whatever it is, I could never stay focused within a game and I always found myself drifting mentally. You know, I'd be like, I, I'd come in thinking that I was focused and then 10 minutes in, I'll just drift off. I'll zoom out, I'm not present anymore and I start thinking about that problem. And then I, after the game, I end up thinking to myself, like, why did I even queue up in the first place? So guys, make sure you are coming in with a clear mind. Whatever you need to do, get it out of the way first. This is also, if you are a student at university or school, I don't recommend playing games when you know you have to do homework or you know you have to do that essay or you know you have to study. I, this was a big one for me as well, why I did all my work at uni. And then when I came back from home, I knew that I was never going to do any work. I had my my work time and my uni time and my study time and then I had my gaming time. I didn't conflate the two. I didn't mix the, the two together and this actually really helped me keep a very clear mind to stay focused and reduce the chances of autopiloting. Now the last little point here guys, um, if you do find yourself in a game autopiloting, which you know is hard to do, it's hard to catch yourself, use the lull states to calibrate yourself with questions. So whether you find yourself, maybe you just died and you realize to yourself, holy shit, I've just been autopiloting these past three minutes. In base, coming off the reset, as you're walking back to lane, ask yourself a few questions. You know, calibrate. Okay, what's what's my role in this composition? What's my next, my next item spike? What's the next objective? What do I need to do to win this game? Ask a few questions, get very specific, and this can help you kind of get back on track and prevent that autopiloting. Now, just for some extra advice to round out the video, guys. So, each death has to simultaneously be the most important thing and the least important. Now, what I mean by this is that 
you have to understand that dying in League of Legends is very meaningful. That can literally be the difference between you winning and losing that game. But at the same time, you have to put that death in perspective that you are going to play hundreds and thousands of games and this death is just a learning experience. You made a decision, you got punished, you learn, refine, and go into the next game. You have to understand that this one game isn't the end of the world. It's a natural part of the game. Dying and trade, heavy trading, whatever it is, it's a natural part of the game. So you have to put a lot of emphasis and understand that it's very important, but you do have to put it in perspective. And the reason I'm bringing this up, guys, is because I see a lot of people autopilot, and they autopilot because they don't understand the importance or the significance of dying. They're okay with making a mistake and they're just going into the next game, or they're, they're okay with making a mistake and thinking that they can still win. Yes, you can still win, but you've got to understand that that one death at three minutes, you autopiloted, didn't lean to the right side, didn't use your ward, didn't do basic jungle tracking, you dying there changes the game. We're, we're playing a game where there's no just reset, we're not playing soccer where there's a half time, the ball goes in the middle, it's instant refresh. We're playing a game that, like all the advantages, it's cumulative. They add up. What happens at minute two affects minute three, which affects minute four, which affects minute ten, which affects what happens at, at minute twenty. It's very important to understand and internalize. Now, the other thing you need to internalize is the importance of the small details creating a win. Right, That part where you got a double kill at the river at 15 minutes, or that triple kill at drag at 20 minutes, it's the result of the small things adding up. Right, It's the small things that add up, to create a big win in the future. So small win, small win, small win, into big win. Small win, small, small win, small win, into a big win. It's very important that you focus on the details. And again, the reason I'm bringing this up is a lot of people who autopilot, they're okay with missing those CS. They're okay with losing tempo. They're okay with blowing flash to that gank. They don't understand that the small details, getting these small micro advantages, will lead to the big wins in the future. Very important to understand. Now the next one here guys is that autopiloting will often occur on Smurfs. And the reason this is, this happens to me all the time is because you realize you don't really care about the result. You're not really connected with a goal. So you've got to be very careful when playing on a Smurf guys and be very specific about what you want to refine. Otherwise your time on this Smurf is largely just going to be wasted. And the last point here guys is that it's much easier to autopilot on your main champion and get away with it, right? Because your base level of play purely relying on system one level of decision making is quite high. It might even be higher than the person that you're versing because maybe the enemy that you're versing hasn't got any champion mastery at all. So you must be very wary of this. Try and catch yourself going into the game. Understand, okay, I'm not going to autopilot. Yes, I'm playing my main champion. I still got to focus. Bring it back to a goal. Bring it back to a learning objective. Use these things to... Um, prevent yourself from autopiloting. So thanks for watching guys. I know this is quite a dense video Hopefully this helps you. I tried to keep it as practical as possible um, I'd appreciate any feedback um, Thanks for the support and I'll see you around the YouTube comments. Cheers guys